I began the city in October of 2015. Um, it initially started as a series of small drawings. After I had gone to, made a trip up to the Blanton Museum uh, at the University of Texas in Austin um, to look at, take a look at an exhibition titled Witness, um, art from the civil rights era. Um, I remember walking through this exhibition and uh, turning a corner and I did not anticipate that I was about to run into a, one of my favorite Philip Gusson paintings. And um, the painting on that wall was City Limits from 1969, I believe. Immediately I was struck by the notion of um, asking my own self how many more generations of American artists will need to tackle subjects like the Klan. So I raced home from Austin to San Antonio, went into the studio that same evening and pulled out several pieces of paper um, because during that car ride home I couldn't get the Gussin uh, image out of my mind and then I started thinking about um, sp other specific uh, influences like Gil Scott Heron's song from 1980, uh, The Clan. And there was something really brewing in my head and, and so I started to flesh this out on one single sheet of paper. And then by about 35 minutes past um, the hour, I, I brought out a second sheet of paper, then a third sheet of paper, and, and after about two hours, I, was, um, I had laid out about six uh, pieces of paper. I just felt like at that moment in time, in, in the fall of 2015, this was something, it was time for this to get out into the world, and this was something that I felt very strongly about um, as, as far as being a social, socially conscious observation of what I saw in the world outside of my studio. This, the idea of, uh, and the symbolism, the ideology, and the principles behind an entity um, like the Ku Klux Klan in America was only a small uh, window into something that was um, looming and, and seemed to, to me um, had a much larger presence. Um, during the process of the painting, um, over the next few months, by the spring of 2016, uh, it seemed like the entire world had shifted. My concern really was it trying to get at a much larger structure, a structural system that was designed and implemented in every facet of Amer in the American way of life. The design and the plannings of cities, um, the American school system, financing, banking, um, all the way from top to bottom. And for me, this became, the city became a much larger, monumental and epic um, statement about what we see um, as we reflect in the mirror as Americans. My goal was to examine why an entity like um, racism or discrimination are ordinary in their, in their existence and are a part of ordinary American way of life. It's as ordinary as something like advertising. Um, for advertising, you know, it reveals, it should reveal to um, many of us that, um, you know, I can't help but question, well, who are these ads for, really? Uh, American advertising um, become, signifies a revelation of the American consciousness. When I think about and look back at advertising historically in America, but especially in the 1980s, even through the 90s as a child, you know, sit in front of the television, um, you could turn 90 channels on that box um, back then, and I had nobody to relate to. There was nobody that looked like me, and became so confused by it that I remember asking my mom around age five or six um, if I was American. I often think about um, the wise words of American writer Gore Vidal, who once said, we are the United States of amnesia. Uh, we learn nothing because we remember nothing. I want to create a public remembrance. I want to make that which, is, which often goes unseen and unnoticed and unthought of, I want to make that apparent. I think that with the city, um, most importantly, a black and white palette um, 
might cause a bit of a, a, a small bit of confusion for the viewer, which was for me very effective. It blurs the line between past and present. My intention of saying we really haven't changed too much, right? The past is still the present. There's a, a, a real common functionality to the postures of the, of the figure in this piece. Um, and for me, that was extremely important. It was my way of uh, not only stripping an entity of an impressive um, force like um, the Ku Klux Klan of their power, but it also, to me as the artist, conveyed that underneath um, these hoods, um, these were common, ordinary, everyday Americans um, as human um, and as American as I am. My aim is to filter the present through the past because it's the past that will reveal um, who we are today and who we will become tomorrow.